The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Mid-month, mid-week, and we're looking at the Dow of 26 after being down a little earlier. <clears throat> uh, let's see. It had a very strong day in legs. See, yesterday in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for higher peaks. We alphabetize them and actually grade them on the way up. Today, we slipped down to 26,943, and now we're about 110 points above that. I like this action. I think we are going to go to a leg uh, D. Doesn't mean that today we have um, a peak C because we don't get above the 27,120. Let me just change that here, 27,120. <clears throat> High of yesterday. And that means we make a peak C. And then tomorrow we make a leg D and then we say, okay, now do we be careful of again? You remember? Uh, July the 16th, 27,398. What was it in the Chapman Wave methodology? I guess I better do this. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, one second. There it is. Okay. In the Chapman Wave methodology, what we're always looking for is an identifiable lowest low bar. Then we merely count each successively higher peak. We alphabetize them on the way up. We can go all the way to seven higher peaks to a peak G, but it's the fourth highest peak, peak A. Then peak B, peak C, highest peak, and then a higher peak D. It's at that fourth highest peak that other things can happen. That's the most important thing. The Chapman Wave methodology is going from the buy signal to a buy mode, which is, implies that you should go to at least a D. At D, if the technical start to fail and other things happen, that's where you can see a deeper uh, pullback, or you can see a recycle up for another whole new uh, cycle to the upside. We're always looking at just three patterns, straight down, straight up, arch formation, do it in red, because if you take out the left side low, it could be quite negative, and green, because if you take out the left side high, it could be very positive, or a combination, straight down, arch, call the dreaded H, and then we've got the well, positive Y, we should call this the inverted Y or the reverse Y, take out the left side high, it can go low, look, those are Ys on the way up. They were arches on the way down that held very nicely. Now, it could be a V-shaped pattern, but it's the same principle. All right, enough with that. Simple technique. It does get a little complicated as you get uh, more mature into the uh, price movement. Let's get on to the price movement here and see that 27,398 was the high of July the 16th. 27,306, 92 points lower, was the high of the 12th of September. Now, are we going to make a slightly lower high at a peak D again and then pull back? But the last one didn't go down to the low of 20, uh, 25,339. We only went down to 25,743. <clears throat> so... Is this going to be one of those cases where we pull back and we pull back? It looks ugly, but actually we stop in that maybe gap in the 26,700s, 600s, and then move higher? We won't know. So in the meantime, I'm looking at the V-shaped pattern. Uh, a, a, a subscriber asked a good question. You mentioned a V-shaped recovery possibly unfolding in the trader's corner. Today. That's my, <coughs> my uh, newsletter final page. is called the trader's corner of my opening call daily newsletter. Very comprehensive newsletter. Um, unless I'm completely missing something, it seems by the time the Chapman Wave identifies a V-shape pattern, it's already made a good chunk of its move. If identified in the 120-minute chart, I could see a tremendous value as it would then give the great returns, uh, give great returns in the daily charts. Am I wrong with this assessment, Kevin? Kevin, you're not wrong at all. One of the problems is. If you remember the last low, I said the last low when we went, we had a beautiful sell signal within seven points of the all-time high, we were short. And then I said it's going to be difficult to get the low this time because I think the pattern is going to be a little different. So we had the arch formation that went to a lowercase m. And then the rule being that if you close above the high of the arch, 
It could go higher. It could go to the next highest peak or moving average, and there was nothing there until almost the high of 27,398, except for that little high right there, the candle of 31st of July at 27,281. So we went 30 points above that. Um, so that was very difficult. And by the time we got it, I was ready to short because we got that peak D and we didn't short right away. We just missed shorting, but we did get a very nice short, uh, about 120 points off that high, peak D high, and then it came, came down and we covered. But the, the gaps are what's so difficult. Look, the 120 minute chart, maybe I'll just, I'll get to that. You know what, Kevin? You got an, an absolutely fabulous point. But if you remember, I discussed this saying that those V-shaped patterns are really good, but when you spiral, when you gap sharply higher, there's just risk reward makes it very difficult to get in, even if you've identified it. And that's the reason why I said to subscribers right now, we're trying to trade for this leg D. And then I don't know what's going to happen because the V-shaped pattern so far is actually taking a little shorter time. It looks to get to 27,306, but it has all the way in time to left side, right side, price time match of the 24th of October. Anything can happen, then you could get your one spike to the upside. So I'll come back to that and talk about it. If I have a chance today about the V-shaped pattern in the 120-minute course, because that's the one where, yes, you got the V-shape, but there were huge gaps to the upside, both, was it Friday and yesterday? Okay, now, with that said, let me just talk about the patterns that we're looking at for the Dow. The Dow is in a sideways consolidation between the 27,300s and the 26,000, it's called 25,700s. But the monthly chart is so close. Look at this. I'm going to expand this. Look at this candle so far right now as we stand at 27,030. Look at that lovely green little candle, tiny little candle with a long leg. If at any point over the next three weeks there's a pullback in the monthly chart below 25, uh, is that 26? Yeah, 26,500. Watch out. We will once again retest the 25,934. Uh, a period, uh, 14 period exponential moving average, that black moving average. And we haven't yet crossed positive in the MACD. And the stochastic is very good at 88%. It's holding the market, but the MACD is the one with it. The stochastic is talk. The momentum, the real up, upside comes from the MACD crossing positive. Look how the MACD crossed positive uh, over here. And look at the nice move we've had up so far in the uh, daily um, down. A chart. Okay, let's go to the S&P. The same story. S&P, MACD cross positive, stochastics at 80%. That's good. Weekly charts improving. Not great, but it is improving. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that the MACD hasn't crossed positive, and the stochastics only at 70%. But look at that monthly candle. If we go to 3,000, not we, if the S&P uh, goes to 3,027.99, it starts leg B. <clears throat> to me, that would be one of the most positive things, and then I think we're in an acceleration mode. I think to get there is going to be a little challenging. I, I still see in my overview of my the different charts, I see a lot of mixed action coming up. The Dow's up three, S&P's down three. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Out. I'd love to take your calls at 877-927-6648. And we do have questions waiting in line. There's a lot more to cover. I'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, we're back. Dow's unchanged. S&P's down about uh, nearly four. Um, a little struggle going on after two big moves to the upside. Now, those moves are triggered by news events. Today's move is being helped in many ways by the, the strength of in certain sectors. I'll talk about it in a moment. Just want to finish the QQQ, which is the NDX 100, is holding well. It doesn't, it's really, it's almost like a reluctant participant here, moving up. If you look at, uh, let's look to the um, FANG stocks, Facebook. Facebook is trading up a leg, same as the others. A leg C could be a peak C today, way under its all time high of 218.62 at 188.95. This is a nice move. It better holds 183 support, 185 to 183 over the next three weeks. If it pulls back under that, that's just not going to be a good sign. Needs to try to get to the 195 level by the first week of November or maybe the second week. If you look at Amazon, AMZN trading right now at 1,076, up eight. Very nice move, stalled right at the, the orange 200 period exponential moving average. 1,087 is that number, and it went to 1,786.24. Nice turnaround the, technically in the daily. The weekly chart is struggling, and so is the monthly, but and there's nothing wrong. It's just that it's taken a, a well-deserved time out from the September high of 2050. If you look at Apple, Apple was a leader. It's kind of stalling here, but it's stalling at almost all-time highs. So let's call this AB. Just for argument's sake, I'm going to call this new leg B. All right? So new leg B uh, could be, a, yes, it's a peak B, and it should go to C and D. And I'm going to also say that this is probably an F slash C in the weekly, and that means it's still bullish. Okay, so Apple's the best of all. It's the only one at all-time highs. Let's go to uh, Netflix, NF, where did we go? NFLX. Netflix is trading right now. Peak D way at the bottom. I just see nothing in Netflix, and this is some kind of a trigger. And then we go to Goog, Alphabet. Goog is stuck in a range near the upper end of the, the at the highs, but it hasn't gone to the all-time high. Of, I think that was well, that wasn't 1280. Was that 1289? No, I think that was. Let me double check here. 
1289.27, uh, yes, back in April. And uh, so it isn't too far away from that, but it hasn't got there yet. I think it's, it's a great company, and I think it should get there at some point. Now, this is very interesting. That says that there's a rotation going on. But wait a minute. What's rotating? The XLF is down 7 at 20, seven cents at 28.02 in a, at a peak D. It is holding nicely. Finally, it's moving out of that monthly Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It's done that five Let's call it six times out of uh, six times out of five months, six months out of five. And what's really uh, important is that it is showing a little bit of leadership with a chance that the the MACD and the monthly will turn positive if this thing can get to the twenty eight fifties or higher uh, and hold there at least for two sessions. I think that'll really help it. But you do have, was it, yeah, Bank of America had a really good earnings report. It's up um, about 65 cents at 30.37, hit 30.72. Um, yes, we've been long for a long time. We've had this a number of times. Uh, last time was at 24.69, so this is a very nice six point gain at this point, but uh, it's, a, it's a longer term position. So th that's what I was saying yesterday. I was asked about what, what do I like? And I said, if the XLF can start to do certain things, if the broker index IAI, which made a high in the, up in the 6680 area, most recent high, uh, all time high was up at 70, I think 70, almost 71. Um, and then it plummeted down to the 59, 71 area because no fees. I mean, it's going to be tough, a tough road to hoe. This is the one to watch because when and if this finally gets back into the 66s and actually hits 69 at some point, if it's this year, that's going to be very bullish all around. Okay, so that's what I want you to look at there. Then I was asked about, uh, let me do the TLT. What about bonds? As far as I'm concerned, bonds are in a range. Uh, there is an H pattern forming in the, in the weekly chart, which says that bonds could pull back. But so far, they're really holding pretty well. They're at 140.03 based on the TLT, and it's up 28 cents. I suspect that it's, if it breaks 138, it's going to retest the 136.54 low of the 13th of September. But if you look at the TNX, uh, TNX is a 10-year yield. The 10-year yield uh, says I, I'm in a range, and I've been talking about this qu for quite some time since I, I, in my weekly charts, I always send to my subscriber subscribers my over the weekend. The, the bonds, my triple yield chart, I show Wood, the iShares, Timber and Forestry ETF, and I show the HGX, the um, housing, Philadelphia Housing Index. And all of the suggested rates are going to stay near the lows, but they could be bouncing, and the 10-year could even go back to retest the 1870, maybe even 1903, however, the 13th. But I do think that it's more likely to, to say it's stuck in a range right now. So those are the things I want to look at just real quickly. Crude oil, haven't looked at it all day. Crude oil is up 77 cents at 53.58. Remember the rectangle I drew? It's in that rectangle. Remember the rectangle I drew for uh, gold? It's trying to get back into the uh, 1495 area. It's at 1493, up 10. You remember the silver? Silver was underneath, <clears throat> underneath the nine and and 14 period moving averages. But there's this long term base of support going down to 17. It always holds that, and it tries to rally. There's the H pattern. Will it break down? Well, the dollar could not hold gains recently. And it's gone from 99.46 to 79.99. Um, that it, it started in the same amount of time. Mm, it hasn't got there yet. Oh, it's got a couple of days to go. But it's making inverted V-shaped pattern. It says within three days it should be testing the 97.86. Uh, this is a continuous contract, 97.86 low of early September. And the weekly chart says at peak D. Remember, D is where other things can happen. Daily, I've been saying this for, for weeks now. The dollar made a peak D at 99.46 on the 1st of October. Watch out. The dollar made a leg D and then a peak D in the weekly chart at, at 99.62. Then I said, be careful because the, the monthly chart is in a leg D. We might see 
that the dollar is going to take a bit of a breather. And while it does that, we'll see what happens to gold. But most importantly, we're going to see what happens to the British pound and the euro. I've been asking friends of mine <clears throat> who are more intimate with the details of, of, of English parliamentary rules and all that sort of thing. Uh, um, and I've been asking them, what, what about Brexit? And they all say, oh, it'll be just terrible. And I say, okay, well, um, uh, it says, I'm, I'm a little surprised because, you know, it was voted that they should vote for Brexit. And then you have to deal with the consequences. That's what the people wanted. So this is very interesting to see how it plays out. I'll talk more about it in a moment because we've got Scott on the line and a lot of people are looking at you as steel. X is the symbol, trading at 10.93, down 49. Scott, how are you? Basil, I had to come back to the experts. You told me Monday I thought Tuesday was going to be a lagger, and you said no, and you were absolutely spot on. Yesterday was uh, just went to the roof, you know, with, with everything but uh, U.S. Steel. So let's talk about U.S. Steel. Uh, so, Joe, oh, oh, Scott, Scott, Scott. We're about to take a break. I don't want to interrupt you. So we'll be right back, folks. Uh, U.S. Steel is down 40, 52 cents. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. The Dow is up three. S&P's down four and a quarter. We're on with Scott in Florida. We're looking at U.S. Steel. Some is X. It's down 46 cents at 10.97. At so, Scott, are you doing anything right now or are you just waiting? Hello, Scott. You there? Yes. Okay. Uh, are you are you uh, doing anything yet, or are you just waiting? 
I'm just waiting. I just want to reiterate for a second what I said earlier. You are really a portal in a storm. You are my lighthouse when the waves are too high. Monday, I didn't know which direction. I thought the next day I would take off, which was yesterday. You said you strongly disagree, and you were right. I mean, the stocks went through the ceiling yesterday. So you... Your information is so accurate that I think sometimes you were uh, somehow connected in a, a psychic way to the market. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm connected in a psychic way, but uh, it's not the way we would like. <laughs> so, okay, this is what I'm looking at. United States, this is what I've been talking about for a little while, and I have to also talk about it in terms of um, I don't see anything yet on a purely technical basis to say to me, United States Steel, once upon a time, just a year or so ago, trading up in the 45 area, down to the nines, it's ready to, 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 to start the big move to the upside. I just don't see it yet, but I do see signs to say that on, on, on a purely technical basis, using it as the rhythm of the market, which is now getting, if you, this is a really beautiful example of the rhythm of the market. If you look at the low of United States Steel on the 28th of August at 10.16, it suddenly turned up and the MACD and the stochastic had a beautiful up move and it went all the way in a full Chapman wave buy mode to a peak D. And that peak D started off a, a trend line that I spoke to you about that I said, that I call it the inside track repellent zone. And it got repelled there and then it pulled back and it made a slightly higher low. Then it started another move, which in percentage terms, I mean, the other one went from uh, from the 10 area to the, I would say, going from 10 to 13. 30% 30 is not a bad move. Then the other one pulled back very sharply, uh, it gave back uh, almost all the gains. And then it ran up and it hit that trend right line resistance and it's still right at um, 1266, a lower low. It's now still creating that same inside track repellent zone is making it even stronger, meaning that the next time it breaks out, there's a chance that that breakout could hold a little longer, but you would need to see a price point where the, the breakout level, in this case yesterday's high of 11.75, actually becomes support. But now what I want you to point out is you see the big move up, then a sharp pullback, a, a, a big move on a percentage basis, but nothing like the first one. A lower low to 9.93, and then yesterday's rally took it up to the 11.75 area. And they're getting smaller and smaller. So what I'd say to you, and I, I'm, I feel that for your type of trading, it's really the best way to look at it. When you, I would just stay in the in the, in the zone of saying. When it pulls back and you suddenly start to see it get a little bit of strength, if you've got that, for you it's both a technical and a gut feeling because you, you've got a whole uh, basis for trading United States Steel. If you see it rallying, I, I concur with you that these are, I'm treating it as short-term trades. There will be a time where it doesn't pull back. It just keeps going, and we're going to say, oh, geez, that was the time to hold. It doesn't matter. Up until then, you, as you know, you can make really good profits by going in and coming out exactly with the timing that you've been using. So this is what I'm going to say to you. I've got a lot of support in the 9.70, in the mid nines. That's a big percentage. I'm not prepared to give up 12%, 13%. Just to, to kind of experiment on, on a buy area. So what I am going to say to you is, if you're looking at this as a short-term trade, the 120-minute chart, let me just go to it right now. The 120-minute chart has got, just gone to peak A, peak B, peak C. Oh, it had a full peak D. There you are. We're always looking for those four higher peaks. And now it's gone mm -hmm. below the moving average support levels. So I'm going to just say to you, look, Tomorrow, it's going to be quite important for a number of reasons, just both in the timing, because we're at this leg D that I'm talking about, leg C, probably a peak C today, in almost all the indices in the daily charts. There should be at least one more nominal new high above the, the highs that we made yesterday. And then I've got to say, I've got a feeling I'm going to be careful. I don't know if I'll short or anything like that. I'm just saying, 
I don't see all the little ducks in order, and I see the same thing when I went through the steel stocks and SLX, the steel ETF. It's just a real mixed picture, and I think we have a lot. To, it has a lot to do with the emotion of what's being said with China, even though we don't really know in the end what's going to become a, whether they'll be buying steel. We just have no idea, but it does seem to be based on some kind of news, and the news now is having less effect on the upside. I'm saying you just be a little careful. I don't think I'd be as ag as aggressive as you were, and unless. Mm -hmm. You can see a rally that takes it above today's high of 11.39. If it goes to 11.40, I think it's going to try to tackle the 11.75 high or 11.70 high. So that's a shorter term. But I'd be very careful if tomorrow there isn't a rally in United States Steel and it starts to trade under 10 point. If it trades under 10.76, I just hold off at least for another couple of days. I'm not online right now. What is it right this second, Basil? 10.96. It's the low of today is so, so far. 10 usually 90. when it gets to that point, when it, it, it touches the 10s and, and, and on the little charting I have, when it gets into the 1070s, that seems to trigger a downfall to, you know, down to the 10. Well, it got all the way to 9 yeah, last right. week, which was crazy. Right. That's and why I I'm saying you I can't explain I, that. So. If, so here's the scenario. If there's a pullback tomorrow and it goes underneath the low of 10.82, the low of yesterday, I would be waiting for a turnaround in, uh, in U.S. Steel and let it get back to about the 10.96. If it's holding and the general market is actually showing some strength, boom, then I think you've got yourself another short-term rally. But in this case, because it's acted so poorly after each each rally and this last one uh, it went down to 993 it went to a lower low i'm saying just be really careful we have to for united states steel to turn around and show that it is now going to be in a in a way oversold category ready to lead the market to higher levels i would have to say on on a weekly basis i need to see a close above 12.80 12.85. Then I say, you know what? I think now the some kind of a rally could, a decent six to eight week rally could uh, uh, unfold. Gee, right up until now, it's just these quick trades that you've been able to do. I don't think I'd take too much. I, I, I wouldn't get too heavily involved in, in going along from this moment unless we get some trigger that's, you know, China says something and everybody says, wow, that's great because then you're going to get a nice rally, then you've got to get out once again. But be careful. I appreciate it, Basil, very much. You are my <laughs> you, you're 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 the rock in the storm because we as traders out here get so flustered sometimes. We need a voice of reason. As long as it's not the rock of Gibraltar. Thank you so much. Speak to you soon, okay, Scott. Good luck. So the Dow is unchanged. We'll be right back. There are a lot of stuff people want to talk about. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So this is a very interesting thing. I was asked about UMH, not UNH, United Health. This is UMH, UMH Properties Inc., probably a REIT, and it's trading at 14.32. I love this. Look at the daily chart on the left, and you look at the low that was made around about 11, uh, 60, what is that, 11, 66 on the 15th of August, and it goes peak A, B, C, D, pulls back. I usually take this particular pattern as a good chance to give it as an alternate count A, even though it didn't make a new high. So it goes gray A, but then it goes E slash B and F slash C. You see this sideways pattern with a little bit of a cup formation? When I get an F slash C or a G slash C, it is so often that it actually just squeaks to a D, which would be a penny above 14.54, and then you'll see that the technicals are fading, and then it starts a deeper pullback. But the weekly chart is so nice. It's at a peak B, MACD strong, stochastics at 90 percent. That the weekly is in a, in a in a buy mode. But then I look at the daily, and I love this because all of a sudden I've gone from very good but a little bit toppy to really good and holding well to oh wait a minute, this just constantly <laughs> makes these H patterns, which then retest the 200 period moving average in the in the weekly in the monthly chart which is at 11.66 so i have to say i love the action of the chart on the shorter time frames the monthly says it needs in october into about the in a month's time i want to be looking at this chart and seeing it 14.80 or higher is at 14.29 because if it's at 1360 or lower it's just from yet another arch formation that's failed. The way it looks, I think this looks very nice. So I'm going to say uh, to uh, the person who in the den, who I think, oh, Pete, he asked about it. Yeah, I'm going to say, I love this chart. If you're long, stay long. Don't do anything. If you're not long, have a little patience. You might miss it. I, there's nothing you can do about it. But at 1429, I'd prefer, because it's a, low, a lowish price stock, I prefer to be looking at it at about 1405 to 1397. Why? Because at that point, it might say, uh oh, I need a little bit more time and price to the downside. Or oh, it's going to be saying, no, that weekly chart is so strong, you have no choice but to add to it or buy it at that level. So, yes, I like it. If you're not in it and you're prepared to, if you're prepared to take a five, about a three and a half to four and a half percent risk, because you're starting a position, you're waiting for legs, see in the weekly, you could nibble here. My preference would be to just have a little patience. I think you get it close to 14. Look, uh, 29 cents, you say, what's the big deal, 29 cents? Well, um, 
it, it is like 1.8, it's almost, you know, 2%. It's worth, it's worth thinking about it because then your risk reward changes. So that's all I'm saying. My preference would be is you're holding it, keep holding it. But if you're not, then give it a, uh, give it a little bit of room, preferably a tad under 14. I'd, I'd like to re, uh, reassess, but I'm almost sure that if it gets to the 13.90s, that's 13.93. That's the area to start the position for the weekly chart. Uh, bingo. Bingo right here is the end. Oh, 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 heart attack. Heart Elizabeth, Elizabeth, who was the guy who used to say that? $3.43 right now. Oh, this is not bingo. This is bio nano genomics. It, it closes yesterday at 0.50 ish. And today it's the $3.43. It's only up 522%. I don't know where you saw that. Um, peaky, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, all I can say is, well, rocket ships do happen. Okay, question I had earlier on was um, looking at the question. So I did the United Technologies. So if you're thinking of a, I'm sorry, I did United U, U.S. Steel. So let me just do one more time U.S. Steel just for because it's two different questioners. One was for the trade, and it's down 57 cents now. The other, I think, is a position play. I would hold off. Let's see how 10, right there, 1074. It's a 1087. Let's see how the 1076 to 10, I'd have to say 1025 area. If that can hold and then there's a rally, that's one thing. I just think it's getting worn out. It's, it's just had false rumors and bounced. I think it, I would give it time. I think it is going to be a play at some point, probably a little later in the year. I mean a real play, six, eight weeks of really strong running to the upside. But right now, there's just too much going on. So be careful. If it's just a quick trade, then what I said to Scott is the thing to do. Um, next question I had was, yeah, so could I overlap the, or, or discuss the S&P? Oh, no, I lost it. Yeah. So S&P having the best year since 2016. Here, please compare charts. So let me do this. Today's Wednesday. I, I, I don't. I'm not set up right now to do that kind of comparison. Let me just go to the S and P. I just I want to show you something. That the S and P has made a rising. Now. For anyone who's involved and interested in head and shoulders patterns, there is a shoulder that you can go after the uh, high of 2018, January. It did pull back sharply, and then there was another high, all time high, 29.40. And then, of course, it didn't pull back sharply. It really pulled back to 23.46 in December. But then it went to a new high of 3,027, and then it pulled back. But now you can see that there's a rising, I, I would call it, a rising uh, head and shoulders, a positive, potential positive one, but these are not the patterns that I like as a head and shoulders pattern. I treat this as a staple. You know how a staple has this little left side kind of cup and then a deeper the head there and then a little right side cup. So I, I have many other ways of re interpreting it. The only thing I can say right now is that when the MACD which is uh, about to cross. Well, we have to wait the entire month. But this MACD, let me just let me just do this. Okay, it's a question. I don't want to. Yeah, I'll do it right now. So during the Obama years, the S and P had a spectacular run and was never discussed. It was never discussed as a um, uh, as something of great interest. It just eh, so it did it. Everything else was interesting. Uh, to President Obama. I could never understand that, but it was a spectacular move. But wait a minute. Uh, within the context of what we're looking at here, um, that said, that's very well, but what about uh, Bush? I mean, what about uh, Trump? So Trump comes in right here. December, remember the first, uh, the, the 6th of December, so the low of December is 2083. We're at 3027. So if you look at this, it's forming a huge consolidation like it did here, but that was parallelish right here. And then it started to rise. And you can even get the same kind of pattern over there where I've drawn the big oval pattern as a consolidation. 
So I could start to do this, almost the same thing here to say this is a huge consolidation. If this can break out and the S&P can go to three, I'd have to give it a little room. It's this trend line right here. If S&P can go this year to three, can break above 3,035, close there any month, I think that that could be a really, really good run to the upside because I have to, I have no choice but to call this a leg B in a monthly chart. And it should still go to a C and a D. So that's the kind of comparison I can do. Now, how does it fail? It really only fails if it takes out like 2650 or something. I have to say, oh my, big U formation. Uh, sorry, arch formation. At this point, I just don't see that. I see this is still very bullish. I'll be back, Basil Chapman, got one segment. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Uh, so I was asked about VLK. Uh, this is Berkshire Hathaway, B shares, insurance banks, uh, uh, Apple, uh, CVX, uh, everything. Uh, down 40 cents at 28.90. And this is the reason why I'm saying, although although we are long, I'm looking for this. There's a chance we might go once again at a peak D. I might flip to the downside. I'm just looking. This is so selective and it's rotational. I don't see real leadership in this particular move. It's almost like USX, that the, the first move was this big move that went to a peak D. The next one kind of failed and lower and then went to a lower low. And now this one's even weaker. Just I'm saying be a little careful here. If you have if you're selectively long and it's working, stay in those positions. It's telling you you're in the right in the right group. 
But if things are str you're seeing struggle, oh, I want you to do this. I'll do it tomorrow. A whole bunch of hockey stick stocks. In other words, there were spectacular stocks, and they came down sharply, and now they're just going sideways. And that says to me that there's another reason when an Adobe, which is just a big leader, goes to 312 and it's trading at 269 with earnings coming out today with a potential Doji peak F in the. Uh, in the in the monthly chart and a G in the in the weekly, I'm saying to myself something's quite not quite right in this picture. It is so selective, so be a little careful. You're about to go to Steve Rose and you got uh, Dave White, Tom O'Brien. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Um, we're really um, working very hard at trying to nail this market to get in positions here. Uh, there are some positions that are I, I, re, I reconfigured my. Um, Stocks to watch list uh, this morning. It'll be keep going for another week or so while we're looking at different stocks. There are some stocks that are starting to improve a lot, but uh, I still say be very selective. And if it's working for you, that's wonderful. Stay in those positions. But if you're frustrated because you keep going in and going out, that says this is probably a time just to hold off. You'll get really good positions uh, at some point. And I think there's going to be some kind of a rally failure at some stage coming soon but i do say that if october we go to all-time highs invariably the close that year is closer to the all-time highs so that's the way we have to look at the market and that would say if we go to a new high then the dow that, uh, yeah that's your leg d but it's only a leg b or a c in some of the other indices i'll be back tomorrow have a wonderful day stay tuned for steve dave and tom see you tomorrow